guys, this week on the Awesome Cast, I go Android, Chill is about to go multicam. We see Google Glass help some people, and when do we get Iron Man 3 digitally? All that and more, Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place, PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. It is the Awesome Cast episode 163, ready to get geeky with you guys once again. Uh, uh, with me, uh, as typical, uh, oh, uh, hey, I'm Mike Sorg, I should introduce myself. I usually don't do that on these shows, do I? Uh, but we're here in the studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, with me on the couch again is John Chichilla, the What's Chilla up? on... At Chilla on Twitter. How you doing, sir? Eh, not too bad. How's your day going? Oh, uh, it's going. Here I am. <laughs> and there you are. And there I am. Uh, yeah, like I said, this is the podcast where we get geeky. We talk about tech. We talk about social media. We talk about cool things on the internet. Um, uh, we try to stay positive with things and just uh, uh, not your general news. We're trying to get with the stories that uh, really kind of got us excited about technology in the future and, and what's upcoming with the, in, in a lot of aspects. Uh, we're, of course, you know, recording live every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And you can join us uh, as well on live.sorgatronmedia.com. Um, we got the link over there, the live button. If you just go to sorgatronmedia.com, we got a link over there on the right as well. Um, and, of course, uh, you can drop us a line at on Twitter, at AwesomeCast. We're also on Google+. Plus. And uh, we're on Facebook as well, so follow us, like us, like this video, like this podcast, comment on this podcast, share it with your friends. If you have other geeky friends you think will be down with the kind of stuff that we're talking to. I know I was actually talking with somebody who's been listening to uh, the show for uh, about a month now, uh, a new listener. I met at the, uh, the Yin's team versus WTAE softball game uh, last, last week uh, or over the weekend. I guess it was only a couple days ago. Everything meshes together with me, Chilla. I, I I feel the same way. Time just continues <laughs> on. Days of the week, weekend. It's it's all the same. Yes. Um. So, yeah. Let's get right with it with our awesome things of the week. Now, I got a where did I put it? Where did I put? It? This is the other problem I have with this thing, Chella. Okay. So I picked up the Nexus Seven. Right. I uh, I think I mentioned last week my issues with the Google Play device store. And I just went ahead and got through Amazon. I got like the next day, right? Perfect. I could have done it next day, but I knew if I did that, I would not have been prepared for last week's podcast. 16 or 32 gig. It's a 16 gig. Cool. I figure I'm not going to get too, I'm not going to be editing videos or anything on this. I can't imagine filling this thing. My, my iPad doesn't really get all that filled unless I download like Infinity Blade or a bunch of other gig and a half games or something like that, right? Don't download Iron Man 3. Don't download Iron Man 3? The movie? The game. The game. The game. Well, I think that's just a general rule. It's about it's, a, it's, it's as bad as Candy Crush. This is bad and is like a, a gig and a half for no reason at all. It's a gig and a half, and it's it's very actually it would probably look beautiful on that screen. <laughs> it's just, but it's just you have to keep playing and playing to get coins to build new get suits. Coins. Why is Iron Man is well, Iron Man is rich? Oh, they're, they're ISO Why does Iron Man need to get coins when he's rich? I don't. And he's know. in HTC ads. That is true. What does HTC stand for? Hold, hold that oh, what is it hold that Hot cat tamale corporation <laughs> right but the, the commercials i don't know i hope they go further with, hey, with the hey, hey, hey good for them good for him for getting a paycheck uh but no i'm really liking it the screen is amazing on this thing uh, now granted and i've been kind of saying oh wow like a lot on twitter this last week right uh but keep in mind i'm uh, tablet wise i'm going from an ipad one to this Okay, it's not like I'm sitting here with like an iPad mini or an iPad. Uh, where are we up? Four? I don't even know anymore. We're not even using numbers. Uh, I don't have like a retina display iPad to compare this to in front of me. I have my f iPhone 4S. I'm on that cusp, Chilla, that round of new tech. See, and that's where I wonder. I wonder if you will end up taking it to the point where you're going to want to watch movies on that now. You're going to want to really expand. Well, I I'm interested already... to hear the 16... Do you... Do you end up with an issue with 16? Because I, when I talk to people, I always say, 
you know, go for the 16 gig. You're, you're probably not going to fill it up. And then their kids put six games on it and then they download all the Harry Potters and all these other movies. And they're like, say, you told me to get the 16 gig model. I'm out of space. Wah. I'm like, well, delete something you're not using. I don't know. What yeah, exactly. You. Yeah, you, hey, how do you <coughs> teach uh, space management, storage management to somebody that young, right? Um, I, I'm already, uh, it, it's nice to throw up Netflix. I've been uh, trying to catch up. I'm wanting to run through a lot of Batman Beyond lately. So I'm not really seeing the, the, the space issue, like the bars issue, because it's already a 4-3 show. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of nice because I can kind of throw it underneath my monitor while I work. And, and it's right there, and I don't have to try to prop it up somewhere else. Um, yeah, I kind of alluded to it when I picked it up. I keep losing this on my desk. It's just a black thing, and it's nondescript, right, when it's off. Uh, sometimes it's going when there's a message. Uh, but other than that, it, I would just look, look around like, where the hell did I put that thing? Oh, my God, where did I put that thing? And it's just, like, sitting right, right in front of me out at this black Thing. Maybe they'll have a, the, some kind of Moto X integration where you can be like, okay, Google, where are you? <laughs> yeah. Where are you? That's where that Moto <laughs> X thing works out. I hope so. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it, but no, like I said, the screen is amazing. The first thing I did was download like all the apps that I use on the iPhone uh, or on iOS in general. So I have my Feedly, my Evernotes, my social media stuff, my Stitcher, my WWE app. That doesn't work. The WWE app will not load on this thing. Uh, the big thing where I'm, this is my preference right now is the, uh, Marvel Unlimited app. I actually don't have a big problem, uh, with the Marvel Unlimited app reading comics on the big iPad. I like it actually. I like the fullness, the, the, the full page thing, uh, not having to like zoom in, you know, the worst thing is having to tilt it when it's a two page spread. Right. But even that's still pretty much readable on my iPad one. The problem is it's so slow and it takes forever for the comics to download. Um, I'm actually having the uh, the uh, app actually stopped, but the the that biggest... doesn't happen on Android devices. No, that doesn't happen. And right here now, I'm having a thing where it it has me signed out, um, but it does it every once in a while, I guess, on everything. Uh, but I've seen that a lot in Netflix lately. I've been getting boot booted uh, from Netflix. Google, a lot of Google apps. Google Plus. Uh, um, uh, Missy was saying that she. She's getting really annoyed with their Google apps because they keep logging her out. Uh, it happens a lot with me with Gmail on the iOS, too. Um, so, yeah, if this actually loads, uh, the comics look really well on here. Like, like I can read everything just that size of the page if it loads. Um, That's but, a decent side for, but here's size the problem. for reading. This is what it defaults to. Can you zoom? I can zoom, but it's a little awkward. And then sometimes I get that little artifacty thing where it's actually zooming and then cutting it off. Oh, the app. It's like it. the app. That, the what app, happens if you rotate and rotate it's like back? The, and that's usually, I think, what fixes it. But no, no, it's not doing it. Sometimes it does it. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the Marvel Unlimited app is great because you pay 10 bucks a month and it's all the comics you would want to read. Um, but their apps are not nearly quality wise up to something like the Comixology app. They definitely had to go in and re do it from scratch mm. when you do the smart panels like i've been reading a few of them on my iphone and you can do the smart panels were just like a panel at the time but they crop them weird and they sometimes they crop off parts of uh speech balloons and they don't have them in the next you know uh, do you think that's screen? the app cropping it or do you think it's I, well i think anytime they're cropping it somebody is manually going through his comics and cropping them and saying okay oh. okay okay but it's probably some st- Poor intern that went through thousands of comics and doesn't give a crap anymore by the time he got to my cable and Deadpool. I figure maybe it was looking for like white borders or something. Because I, I, I and I don't I mean I don't know what other people see in the, in the Android world. Mm-hmm. I, what I see is, is you, you, you get some of those apps that don't render correctly because they were either yeah. built for a phone or they looked like. It's an enlarged app. Exactly. Or... Exactly. And that's the other thing, too. And I'm guessing this is like it's thinking it's, it's phone size and it's just expanding and it doesn't know what to do with everything. And other than that, um, I, I think everything else works great. Again, it looks great. I'm, I love the widgets. I, I pre- created pretty much a, a social media page here with uh, uh, widgets for my Twitter, Google Plus, and, and even my Google Voice text and everything, which is like my business number, basically. Um, uh, it's... I, the the uh, the 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 motion. I don't know if you can see on the video, but the, the slight motion background freaks me out, and I'm sure that's part of the reason why I have to tell you my, my battery 
<laughs> do you think it does it cause a lot of battery drain? I don't know. I, I, it's not on long enough. I need to go in and dig in the settings. I have not dug in. I, I'm not versed in Android just yet. Uh, so I, I haven't dug in a lot. I'm kind of just kind of getting it up to snuff to do at least what my other devices do. But that's the really cool thing. I'm so ingrained in Google everywhere else. Other than, okay, everything looks different. I pull down here and it does something different. Um, everything I can interchange real easily. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's like this platform agnostic state at this point. I can't think of a, uh, anything on my phone that I don't have on here. Only unfortunate part is one of the apps that I use, which is LogMeIn, um, is like 30 bucks, and I have to buy it again on the Play Store if I want to use it here, which would be really handy, but I'm not ready to do that right away. Uh, until I've had a little bit more time with it. And now LogMeIn is now free on iOS. Is it, is it not free yet? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was here too. But um, I, th there's not. like a free version. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the thirty dollar one I'm seeing it has a little more features or something. Uh, so I'm gonna have to investigate that further. Uh, but otherwise, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm really digging it. I think uh, this is kind of in those states where I'm. You know, I, I've said before, I, I grab the iPad when I don't want to do work, more or less, mm -hmm. as my, I'm going to go down, sit on the porch, uh, you know, in the living room, watch some TV and have this to poke around at what's going on, social media, internet, you know, I'll check my email and stuff. Um, so this is definitely, it's definitely way powerful because it's, you know, brand new, you know. Um, playing a little bit of games on it. I love playing. I've, I've, I've uh, had a hum humble bundle I bought and it has like you know, the games are also for windows and everything too of uh indie games but there's this uh, uh super bastard deluxe stealth game that is amazing on here um so i'm kind of really digging this as a gaming device and of course there's emulators and everything too they're a little wonky like it can't it feels like i can't press both buttons at the same time because of the touch do you have a wii i have a wii <gasps> use your wiimote there's a thing for that. There's oh, an app I'm for that. Pull, there's an app for that. And I've um, done that. And I have I have Nintendo emulators. I have Sega Genesis mm. emulators. Not that Awesome Cast condones copyright violation, but um, I do have a lot of different emulators. In fact, Turbo Graphics 16. I don't know if you ever played that. Mm -hmm. The Splatter House was a huge game that I liked to play as a kid. So I have I have those are the main emulators. That yeah, I, have. I threw NES. I threw a Genesis one on here. I threw a Super Nintendo one. Um, from the chat room, Graphic Gimmick says, uh, the fact that it was only $230 and I haven't found anything about it I don't like. I, I, I gotta say that too. Is that I spent, you know, $100 less than if I got an iPad <clears throat> mini. With mm -hmm. a better screen, you guys better be updating, updating uh, your uh, iPad minis next month. Or you guys are in trouble. Cause this... See, I think you're going to see November, but that's yeah, still, for a still, it, it's got to be before the end of the year. You've got to have Retina on that thing to compete with this, you know? Um... The weight. That's what I love about that device. It's as so soon as right. I picked it up, it's ridiculous. the weight is phenomenal. I'm worried about placing this somewhere or, or, or yeah, like it feels I like it's too light. You pick it up, I feel like I'm, it's just going to launch out of my hand. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Um, uh, the other problem is like it sits down and I don't know, like I'll start using it for a bit and then I don't know where the button is to turn it off or on because I get flipped around because there's no distinguishing marks or anything. Like, I mean, you got... You got your plug here. You got your buttons here. But as I'm using it, it's not like I'm used to that center button to kind of ground me mm -hmm. on the iDevices. So that's kind of throwing me too. Uh, the, the software buttons, yeah, they're all right. Kind of getting used to the idea of a back button. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm really digging it. Um, so I'm going to play with it a bit more. Well, I mean, it's basically I'm going to play with it about every day here. Uh, but I, I haven't played much with the camera. Haven't done hangouts or anything with it yet. Um, took a couple pictures with it, and I don't want to be the guy holding up a thing like this, trying to take pictures at a show. You know? what, what are you thinking about the speakers on it? Like, how does it sound? Because didn't they? I think they uh, pretty good. There's two speakers on the back. There's actually one here and here. So, so it sounds pretty. It do sounds, you find yourself cupping it, or is it pretty? It no, it's pretty full. It's, it's definitely you. pretty full. Um, it's even like it loaded my all my music from Google Music right away because I, I did the <clears> upload <throat> thing when they first did that. Okay. Uh, so I was like, oh, there's my entire library. Hello. Uh, but then I'm like, well, what am I? How, am I really going to listen to stuff on this? You know, uh, I feel like my phone does a better job when I'm just using the speaker. And but for no, I had no problems watching like you know uh, Batman Beyond. You know, while I was working. Uh, uh, you got to think also, you know, the speaker is pushing that way away mm -hmm. from you. So, again, I have it up 
to my uh, my monitor, so it's everything is just kind of bouncing back at me from whatever's you know behind my monitor and everything. Do they have a dock or anything for it? Because that that's the one thing I find myself at work. I have my work life in front of me, mm -hmm. and I actually have a tablet docked and a phone docked, and it's almost like I find them to be additional monitors. I don't always have space underneath my monitor to set something. Mm -hmm. That's where I find like I, I really want either a case that has like the built in it can prop up. I yeah. like that in the Motorola yeah. Zoom tablet. Um, my iPad, I have a dock for that and, and a phone. The phone I have a dock for even like the BlackBerry Playbook. You get into the HP touchpad. They had the, the induction charging and I think that actually does induction charging as well. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that I can have somehow propped up. And yeah, connect. and I haven't looked. I, I started looking at a little bit of cases. They look like pretty standard fare. Uh, you know, I, I, it's going to be tougher to find any Android case, right? Because mm -hmm. there's not as many of that device. I just figured because it's Google. I don't know if in the Play Store they were going to have. I, don't know. I know they had. I know. I think, I'm not buying anything from the Play Store again. That's for sure. <laughs> I, I know they had. I know they had some kind of dock, and I don't know if it was for the nexus 7 or the nexus 10 the prior device mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i look for that i need something that's going to prop it up and i can kind of swivel it around or do something with it um again again uh, uh graphic gimmick in the in the chat saying uh battery life is amazing camera isn't so great so there's a flaw but i don't necessarily take pictures with it i don't think many are i think you're doing using it for video communication and that's about it you don't need like a giant 10 megapixel camera or anything like that um and we talk about the speakers and the. You know, I don't see you using the headphones with this thing. I don't. <clears> use, I don't with my iPad. You know, I, I don't see using it as a music device. Video, the speakers are just fine. Um, I mean, I imagine if I'm uh, on a bus or train or whatever, uh, you know, I use the headphones then uh, if I was watching a movie. But other than that, no, I think, I think it, they're just fine for the thing I need it for, which is when I'm sitting there on the porch or in my office, want to pull up a YouTube video. Um, it's great. It's great for watching YouTube videos. There's that little, I don't know if this is a standard thing with uh, Google, but um, like they have the widget that's like latest ones from your subscription. Okay. And I feel like I neglect my subscriptions a lot, you know, like I should be watching more source feed because I love that, or source fed because I love that. Um, it was <clears> even, but it was kind of interesting because then it would pop up when it's like, oh, there's a video I posted or, you know, and sometimes I'll just pull it up to see how it looks on the device. Um, you know, again, with the wrestling stuff and anything else I've subscribed to, it's been pretty nice with that and just other stuff that, again, I've ignored for a while. So it's like the widgets are nice for bringing that stuff to the forefront uh, for sure. Um, and, and I do like that idea. Are you able to add more screens of apps? Like, are you that, stuck with the five that come that I don't, you're, or is it, is if it, you drag to a new one, will it expand? I don't know. I tried I, I've never tried that. There well, wait are. a minute. No. Cause on the, on the, um, the galaxy camera that I have. Yeah. It only had three screens. I guess you can get and the, I drug to a new screen. I guess you can get different app launchers and stuff anyways. Yeah. Too. Oh, I, I haven't messed with too much. Like, I, I think on your recommendation, I think I, I downloaded SwiftKey, uh, trying the free version of that. Um, I kind of want to just take on the full giggle, giggle, Google experience um, right right out of the box, basically. Uh, so I haven't really been, you know, messing a little bit with it, just playing with the widgets and see what Google, as Google intended it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, because that's kind of what I want to see what the experience is, because I know we keep talking about like, oh, the phones, you have all this crap on there and I have to deal with this and I'm not getting my update. I got four or three on this thing. Well, it's it's a Nexus device, so you're going to get day one. I'm going to get all that stuff. And that's the only way that I would do this with the Google thing. Again, I do not want this as my phone. I cannot imagine that setup as my phone. Um, it, 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 but if I did a phone, it'd be, have to be a Nexus, right? Right. So if I find myself in that day and age where I decide to start doing phone swapping kind of situations, uh, that's what I, that's what I would have to do. Um, but yeah, I think it's really good for getting stuff done. I, I really kind of look at it more as a extended another desktop machine that I can carry around. That seven inch form factor is great. I they, they're right. That is like the nice medium of it you know not too big not too small i don't feel like i'm windowed into something um but i, I can get a lot done with it I, I just wish the apps took advantage of it as 
You, I mean, I, I thought about it this way. Most of the time, it seems like the apps for Android are phone apps that are blowing up versus most of the time with the iPad, they're iPad apps that are blowing down for the Mac iPad mini, mm -hmm. right? I, I think, uh, and not spending much time with the iPad mini, but I think that works better because it's like, well, it's an iPad, so I have that experience still, but it's in a better kind of holding up thing. See, I'm, I'm having a really hard decision going between, do I go the 10 inch line or do I go the seven inch line? Yeah. And, and my thing is, is that I really am trying to make the jump to get away from paper so I want something that I can use either, well, more than likely both, a keyboard and a stylus with. Mm -hmm. I can take it to a meeting. I can jot notes. I can do that kind of, I can I come back. I can thing. type out. I think this is your thing. I really but do. I looked at the screen and I looked at like my notepad and I have a pretty small notepad I keep for meetings. Yeah. It's, it, it's a lot smaller than the seven inch screen so if you want smaller than this so you maybe you want like a six or i'm sorry it's a lot bigger it's, it's a lot bigger actually okay. it it matches like the ipad Oops, sorry I have you're playing something open. i have a game open <clears throat> it really matches the 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 10 inch or 9.7 inch or whatever really matches my notepad that i use at work where i wonder is that going to be too small yeah or maybe i'll just I don't I, see. I don't know. I, I it's a decision I'm going to have to make. I don't know how I'm going to make it. What's going to what's going to drive me? Yeah. And, and, and my iPad, I mean, I think, you know, I, I'm not when it's time to upgrade that 10 inch device. I'm going iPad again. I, I don't think or I don't see any reason to do like this is an experiment. This is so the halfway point is the experiment for me. The seven inch device is mm -hmm. the experiment for me uh, because I know this works really good for me as a phone, as an iPhone. Um, and the iPad works really good for that big device, and it's the thing that makes sense with the work I do with the Teleprompt Plus and everything like that. Um, and I know, I mean, there are, I'm already seeing a little bit of the things I don't like about this, that I don't want to have to be in the device that needs to be dependable. That's where it falls apart for me. Um, it's a sweet device, but it's, it, the, uh, the app stops, uh, some of the organization, some of the settings, it, it just doesn't feel like I can depend on this. Even just like out of the box, I was having a couple of little problems. Um, versus, you know, yeah, this is this is more or less solid. It's you because know? you're holding it wrong. So I'm holding it wrong. I don't know which way to hold it. There's no <laughs> distinguishable buttons. Um, so. But uh, but no, but I, I love it. This is I mean, it's the ultimate Google experience if you're already into it. I mean, if you're kind of half ass, ah, I use Google, but I use this thing for the other thing. Um, if you're not, but you know, so is this thing, right? If you're not, if you're half assed into Google, this the, the glass doesn't make sense either. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you'll have other options. Um, I, you know, people's like, uh, They say, well, the you know the app access and everything, right? Uh, that I've seen so far, and I, I understand I can go download stuff and change everything, but I don't want to do that. I want it to just work, right? Um, but that same thing where I, I click on a document and it pulls up, oh, here's the apps they can work with. It, they're doing that on this too. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, this is getting there from the other direction of safe and reliable to okay, more and more functional, um, and I'm okay with that. I'd rather be that way than. Uh, Wild West towards let's try to get things safer. So you you read a lot of blogs. You you surf the web a lot. Have you surfed the web a lot on the seven inch device? Because that's where I really look at it as okay. A lot of my house is now I can't I have to look at the app stores and and Android's at now a maturity point that I could actually move to the Android ecosystem because things like. My home stereo, my my Harmony, like all the devices, they're finally Nest. Mm -hmm. There's apps across those There's two parody. platforms. Yeah, it's, I, I couldn't think of uh, much that I, uh, other than stuff I had to rebuy that wasn't already there. But now, now, how do you feel about the browsing experience on a seven-inch device? It's Chrome, so I think it's awesome that I'm but, Chrome right out of the box. I'm synced up, and I have everything off of every device because I live in Chrome. Uh, I would probably have no problem picking up a Chromebook and just going with my day, other than you know the obvious media stuff that I do. Um, but what about the 
the real estate, screen real estate. Not a problem. Not uh, a problem. The worst thing you do is just like when you're looking at stuff on an iPhone, you do the double tap and it pinch pulls and zoom, up. and this works fine. Cool. It, it, it's no, it's it's it is feels like that halfway point between the phone and the tablet. I uh, maybe move into a seven inch. I don't know. It's it's definitely. A, I you, see. I, I look at it as it's going to save me. I really want to move up to the 64 gig and potentially even not just a Wi-Fi device anymore. Mm -hmm. And when you look at making that jump. And that's what, and that's the use case that I think really works. Uh, when I went out to get my Google Glass, <laughs> uh, Matt, Matt Mike was with me and he was walking around with his new iPad mini. Just walking around. He's got it on. I think he had Verizon in it and everything. Uh, he's taking he's Doing the thing I don't like, taking pictures with your tablet. But it's what he has. He doesn't. He uh, he has a philosophy. I think he has a standard phone. I'm sure he'll correct me. Actually, he's not here tonight. Um, and then he has like an iPod Touch, and he has the iPad. He's like, well, I have this. I don't need a smartphone because I can do everything on this thing. It's on sale. Cool. Um, but he's just walking around this thing, walking around the city, and 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 doing whatever, and pulling up and Twitter and everything. It's something that goes into his pocket. That's great. I'm kind of afraid to put this thing in my pocket, but you can't, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I, I, it's the ultimate portable and uh, Samsung's coming out. I, I couldn't believe it. Samsung's coming out, I think, with a, the, the Galaxy Mega <laughs> and it's going to be a 6.3 inch phone. So you're, it's I mean, I, I you're see, real close to that size, and it's gonna be. I see all those people with their four-inch uh, phones, or the kids in class, or, or or just like you know friends and stuff. I'm just like, that's too much phone. I'm I'm like still skeptical of the um, oddly long iPhone five that I want to be upgrading to. Uh, I just I don't know. It just feels weird. But then again, this has been feeling small to see. I wish I could lately. go back to that. I, I want to go back to this. I want to go back. Maybe that's to the, the thing. Small. Maybe that's what we get. We're supposed to be getting rumor iPhone 5S uh, like we've had before. Yeah, and then the 5C that's going to be the cheaper one. Maybe the 5C is going to be all the goodies in the iPhone 5. But this size that size i i, I think, think that would make sense because i i mean you can't you gotta think you know i think there's some people not everybody wants a huge phone right some people are cool with this right and that's right i think samsung's gone a bit over the over the top with having eight models of the same phone i think well, if, they have if apple they also have every size don't they they do but then that's the point they have every size i think apple's made a run on the market based on our our Accessory providers are going to stick with us and we're going to have a, a large amount of accessories based on the fact that our form factor is going to stay the same for two years. The, I mean, I, I really think that's when you look at the whole reason or one of the main reasons that, that Tim Cook is where he is is because he completely reimagined how their, um, their supply chain management worked, the reuse of parts. Mm -hmm. I don't think... I don't think you're going to see a small device. In fact, I think you're going to see where, and I don't want to get too much into hypotheticals in, the, in this show, but I think you're going to see where they don't want to do the two-year-old model for free and the one-year-old model for 99. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to see the refreshes, the new, they're going to get rid of the 4, 4S, you're going to, and, the, and the 5. I think you're going to see the 5 disappear. And I think you're going to have the 5S. So it's going to be like when the iPad, iPods get updated. Right. You're going to have everything along the line and then everything else, the, the last model just disappears right, right off the market. And they're, it's going to keep the same chassis. The, the C is always going to have the same chassis as either the current model. Uh -huh. the, like the, the 5C will have the same chassis as the 5 and the 5S will have the same chassis. So you'll have three circulations of the device at some point in time i mean it, 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 for a short period of time you're gonna have three different devices with the same chassis which gets back to people people are going to realize when they make accessories they're they they have a broader market to target and, and i think that's going to gain them what i think where it's really going to gain them is you're not going to have this oh, i still have a 3gs why aren't you giving me an os for it yeah why aren't you upgrading Kind of how I feel about my iPad 1. And as the problem is, and I'm going to hold out on the iPad 1, but until the first time where a, a app that I need, <clears throat> like say my teleprompter software, decides, oh, we're not going to update until you get to 
a new thing. As it is, I actually subscribed digitally to uh, WWE Magazine because I want to see how that was. Every time I open it up, it says you need an uh, updated version of this application. Some features might not work. I was like, well, it's newsstand. It's part of the OS. I can't change that. Yeah. So I'm already seeing that. I'm already seeing a couple of apps disappear because they can't update them. If I were to restore, I did a restore actually uh, a couple months ago to try to get some speed back, uh, which really worked. Um, but, you know, still as sluggish as it's going to be. Um, so, uh, yeah, as soon as I see like that, that teleprompt software decide, uh, yeah, you got to have iPhone iOS 6 in order to do this. Yeah, this is too old. That's when I'm going to be like, time for a new iPad. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I think, I mean, maybe they'll shorten their window. Or are they going to support the three year old devices? Maybe, maybe they'll still try to support us. Maybe they'll tr still try to support a three-year-old device, but I think that by coming in now and saying, you know, next year, we're 4S4, we're, we're done with those yeah, models yeah. for now. But you know what, they've always, they've always had a clear path for that. And Microsoft Microsoft does this, an 18-month support life cycle on, in their mobile phone OS, and I mm -hmm. think they may have extended it for Windows Phone so, 8. So as it is, but, Apple is already doing better than that, and Google can't even get the support out well, there in general. Nexus. Not that it's their, their fault, not that it's their fault, but, I mean, the whole ecosystem's messed up, as we've talked about plenty of times here. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, you're awesome thing of the week, and then I gotta go touch base with a couple of things. This is something, actually, I played with a little bit ago. We were talking about a little before the show, right? So, so my awesome the thing is an app. It's called ManyCam, M-A-N-Y Cam, not na Nanny Cam, ma <laughs> Many Cam, <laughs> Many Cam. And it, it's you know what I was pretty impressed with their website. In fact, that their the app is actually free. Mm -hmm. There is a pro version where it has a few extra bells and whistles, but the core capabilities of the app itself um, mm -hmm. is to allow you pretty much a virtual webcam switcher. So I have um, a multiple webcams. I can actually use a virtual video driver um, and switch on the fly in something like Skype. And this is something I want to try in, in some of the upcoming weeks. Potentially, if I'm not here on the couch, if I'm at home, I could have three webcams, something pointing at, at a device that I want to review. And then I can have two different angles without having to chew through bandwidth with three simultaneous. So, so you're with this. Ideally, you're going to be able to create a uh, sort of a mini studio setup like we have here with all these bells and whistles that Hangout made obsolete last year. Um, <laughs> I keep wanting to do more Hangout stuff, but then I think, but I have a studio, so why? You yeah. Know, I but I want to do the Hangout stuff because of the YouTube connection and and to get that you know skill set but it's interesting because because i look at it from from the home use scenario of i i mean i have a 15 meg up five meg down yeah so if i if i threw wait 15 up no i'm sorry 15 flip down that. five flip up that yeah flip it <laughs> but but still <clears throat> five up isn't isn't bad but it's but it can get tight it's not it, i don't well, think then, we, i don't think we could do this on five up right so for me i don't want to have four webcams Pushing data up. Constantly streaming, yeah. Carla turns on something or starts messing. And then, starts watching Iron Man 3 on Ultraviolet, <laughs> as we'll get to a little bit later. And then and then all of a sudden, the connection goes to crap. Yeah, yeah. So I, I look at it as that, that virtual webcam switch. The other thing I really like is you can actually broadcast your desktop as, mm -hmm. as a camera. Mm -hmm. So and, Which is great. And I, I mentioned this. You can do it in Google Hangout, but it's not a click and you're on it. Right. It's a click. Okay, which one? Click. Okay, let's hit okay. Now we're on it, and then you click off. So that's a little junky to do that on the fly. Yeah, I just I just look at it as it'll give me the capabilities mm -hmm. of having a multitude of cameras. It's a really good example, of, like uh, the idea that you're doing. Uh, Brian Brushwood actually does this with his shows on Twit. And I know I see it on Frame Rate, uh, where he has, and I'm sure he has a more kind of broader setup. I, who knows? He might be using something like this where he has two cameras set up and he has a backdrop and he switches between his own cameras. And maybe he, I think he also has a desktop view as well. So he switches on his end while they're switching way at home base with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And they just put it on him and he puts up what he wants to show for his camera. So it's this interesting second studio idea. Um, I, and I'd like the. I, I'm definitely interested in, in you getting this up and running and playing with that concept. Yeah, I, I'm really excited for that. I'm not using the things like 
throw throw a pirate hat on me or, or <laughs> no or or do anything like that. But I, I look at it as it gives me the capability to really kind of give that broadcast remote broadcast persona. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm hoping I can get it up and running. There's some issues on the Mac side. I'm testing the Windows app now. I did find an alternative for the Mac. Wow. I did. I did find problems. I did find problems with uh, uh, getting the Mac side going when I tested it. And again, PC did run a little better. Uh, in either case, for me, I'm trying to convert FireWire to get into Google Hangout uh, okay. so I can get better cameras on these people. Unfortunately, with this uh, mini cam, uh, uh, one th- problem I did see was there's a bit of a delay in the video. Uh, significant delay in the video, actually. And I don't know. I, well, one computer I was testing on was an i7 iMac that's like, oh. I don't know, a 2011? Still, it's an i7. It's mm-hmm. not. It should not be lagging with something like this. And I think that's just the process uh, that the application goes to. So I want to see, I, I'm curious to see if you're just using regular webcams or whatnot, uh, is, do you have as much of a problem? with mm-hmm. that um and do we do do we do hangout when we bring you in here do we use skype because it's going to work better for whatever reason um so uh, it's going to be an interesting experience when the many many cam and the other app i was looking at both actually support also web-based flash and web-based webcam access mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so i could potentially do hangout i could do Skype, it pretty much creates a virtualized video yeah, driver. Yeah, you can put it anywhere. You put it anywhere. But it's, it's what works better mm-hmm. uh, in the long run that I'm kind of concerned with. So. so we'll have to play with that. Awesome. All right, let's touch base with a couple of things, and we'll get back into some awesome things. But we got some awesome things going on right here uh, in the Sorgatron Media uh, Network. I wanted to draw attention. Really cool article going on at insertcointobegin.com. Bringing it up to kind of follow up on a conversation we actually had uh, about a month ago, I think it was, when we had the Ladies of Awesome cast in here. And we did, and it was in the dark, and you guys didn't get great video or anything, uh, but we did get it done on, on several iPhones <laughs> and everything. Uh, but no, there was a good conversation about, because uh, uh, the new Call of Duty was talked about, and the whole thing that uh, uh, you had all this customiz- customizability, which is new to the Call of Duty franchise, I can, you know, I get my guy different colors, different outfits, you know, however you want to do uh, for your avatar. Uh, you can have a dog and even be a dog, but you couldn't be a woman was the issue. What? That's okay, because they just announced you can be a chick. Uh, in the weirdest way possible, I actually watched this because they did the uh, big custom. They had a big uh, live on a stage in whatever convention, whatever hall that they rented announcement just for the multiplayer features. It hmm. looks like the E3 con- like Activision thing, but just for the multiplayer thing. And they, and they they went through all the features, showed some videos, had some people come out from the development team, and they ended it with uh, some real Marines playing some pro gamers like like in a death match, and they called it live and everything. So that was kind of cool. But at, at the end of the custom, customization um, video... Uh, they showed, oh, you can do this, 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 and they pulled back, and it's like a girl shooting, you know, real, they, they filmed like a real girl shooting. So they didn't actually show a girl in the game, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. It's like, I feel like they're tacking this on, but still yeah, significant. Uh, but the guys over at insertcointobegin.com, our friends over there, they'll be doing Let's Play here, and I'm sure probably be a little bit of talk about this there. Uh, they did a great Call of Duty gr- Ghosts and Women in Gaming article where... Instead of the dudes over there talking about girls and gaming, they actually went to the girls. And one actually, Chick Chris on here that was on that episode. Um, Jubilee, who's also contributed to that site before. Uh, and I think Cat is the third one. And there's a little bit of look about a look back at some of the uh, strong female characters uh, in video games. So a, a pretty cool article. Go check that out. Uh, they're doing a great job getting content over uh, going the last couple of weeks. Uh, so go support that. Go like them on the Facebooks and the Google Pluses and everything so you don't miss any of the articles. Uh, and, and yeah, check that out. All, other thing going on, Sorgatron Media. Go, we're, we're still pushing. We're still pushing for that newsletter, Chilla. I'm working on that. You're working if on I that? If I wasn't... 
If, have you not signed up for it yet? Oh, no, no, no. I actually signed up for that. I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about something Oh, else. you're talking about that other thing. No, that no, no, other no, 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 thing. no, no. We're working on that other thing. But that other thing can be delivered through this thing. Um, if you go over uh, SorgatronMedia.com, uh, there's a button over there uh, way down here. Uh, Sorgatron Media in your inbox. Or if you're on the live page, it's right at the top if you're joining us in the chat. Uh, sign up there. That's the newsletter. You'll get an update every week on what's going on in the Sorgatron Media uh, universe. And as a little bit of an incentive, uh, we're going to toss out to one of our new subscribers over these, over these last couple of weeks. And we're probably going to run this one more week here. Uh, you'll get a WWE Greatest Stars of the 90s. Uh, you'll be putting a drawing for this DVD um, uh, from everybody that signs up since we first announced it last week. So a little bit of incentive. Let's get these kicked out of the dark. Let me know how it is. I mean, everybody loves the 90s. Everybody wishes that we'd go back to the 90s as far as wrestling goes. I mean, I mean, how many people? I mean, you said you you watched it like that's back what, in the yeah, day, I watched right? it back that in the day. That was your I'm day. Not, I'm not current. This and this 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 covers like a lot of the '90s, and I think mo most everybody, if they watched wrestling at one point or another, it was the '90s. Mm -hmm. So go check that out. Of course, uh, uh, from Wrestling Mayhem Show, a uh, good uh, contribution from I think Mad Mike actually uh, put that in the prize pool. So um, so let's get back to the news items, the awesome news items that we have. Uh, I definitely want to get to this conversation. We actually had part of it <laughs> before the show. Um, but tell me what's going on with Iron Man 3. So Iron Man 3, and, and like Mike said, we, we were talking about this a little bit before the show. Iron Man 3 looks like it's going to launch multiple weeks ahead of time in digital format before it's available on Blu-ray and DVD. Uh, um, I, it was interesting because I looked this up. It's actually on Marvel.com, so Marvel's really pushing for for broadcasting and advertising of, of this fact mm -hmm. and then they link you to the itunes site and itunes just says it's available the same day as blu-ray okay but looking at all the other sites i'm seeing that you are going to see like i think it's like a september 3rd release for digital format and then you're looking at um i think like the 23rd of august of september Wait, so oh. you're so you're the third of september digital and the oh. 23rd or 24th for Blu-ray DVD. Ooh. So you're one, two, that's three weeks. So you're three weeks between. And I'm wondering if this is going to be like the when they were really trying to push DVD sales. And the VHS rental would come out. So you could rent it on VHS. You could buy it the same day on DVD and potentially <clears throat> rent the DVD. Or you had to wait about another month or two to get the VHS copy of, of a movie. I'm wondering if we're going to see this huge push finally where they're really going to move you towards a digital format. Well, I, and as I said, I think this is, it's not a new concept, but it's a broader stroke of the concept because I have definitely seen uh, Get It First here digitally um, on Xbox. Just, you know, you open up the mm -hmm. Xbox and it's advertising God knows what on the first page, right? Uh, I, I think The Hobbit had uh, a, a few days early kind of release on digitally 21 on Jump there. Street may have had that. Now that you're saying that, I, I do remember seeing yeah, it's always in those like panels. Yeah, it's always like smaller, that, smaller stuff, right? right? Like nothing, like The Hobbit's probably the biggest thing I could think of, right? But it's usually days. Yeah. Get it, get it the Friday before the Tuesday it's this available. This is significant. On, on and it's DVD. the right movie. If they're going to try to experiment with this idea, this is the one to check it with because this is the one that's going to, if it's going to work, you know, the other thing that really it's, the biggest, it's one of the biggest releases of the year. Mm -hmm. The other thing that really surprised me is, is and I, I think the way they're trying to upplay this as well is I'm starting to see more and more the, the gag reel and the outtakes. Mm -hmm. Marvel's putting them out on YouTube. They're, they're really too. putting them out there yeah. for mass consumption. Yeah. It, yeah. Almost, which is which is funny because that's that seems to be because one thing that bugs me, I like in the two disc sets to get the extra features. I love that behind the scenes stuff. I, you know, I make videos. So that, that, that's kind of my thing. Uh, but, uh, it's been really peeving me off to get, like, not even having the option because I want to get the DVD and I don't want to get Blu-ray. <laughs> so, uh, actually, and, and we, we, this whole, and this is ultraviolet or just digital in general? It said digital download and I, I, I know, I noticed there was a drop down. Ultraviolet was in there. iTunes okay. was okay. in there. Because they are definitely providing <clears throat> in, I believe, I hope, an ultraviolet version. God, I hope so because I bought the digital copy it is. version of it. Um, yeah, the, it was out there on Mar Marvel's website. Because the ones they, before didn't. 
Uh, okay. The ones, the one I have an Iron Man two digital download through iTunes, for instance. Um, but I think this is the time for something like Ultraviolet. I've been keeping an eye on. I pre-ordered um, uh, uh, Iron Man, uh, Star Trek, and and Superman because I wanted to say, yeah. Well, one, I always forget when these things come out, so I want to make sure I actually get them. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I got the ones with the digital copies because I'm trying to say, okay, I think it's at that time. Let's buy into this ultraviolet idea. <clears throat> you know, uh, I converted some of my movies that they let me do for free. Uh, so, th which is kind of cool that if you're like, oh, I want this movie to be portable, like on my iPhone on a trip, which I did. I watched a little bit of Space Jam while I was on the mega bus to New York last month. Um, that was one of the freebies they gave me. <laughs> just want to qualify that uh but, <clears throat> but i could have usually watched my scott scott pilgrim they had converted which is like i think five bucks i recently picked up uh on dvd with uh with a digital copy for like 10 bucks on amazon the amazing spider-man and uh we i plugged in the digital copy pulled it up on the xbox because they updated the flickster app to be able to pull in your ultraviolets mm -hmm. i haven't even put the dvd in the uh in the player and the only reason I'm thinking of doing that because I want to go check out the uh, extended scenes and everything that that are that were included in it. So when I got I got um, Ghost Protocol, Mission Impossible. Yeah, I got Mission Impossible that came, and I actually got the additional content mm -hmm. for download. Now that was supposed to be Ultraviolet. It was when Ultraviolet I think first started, and they ended up having to switch. And it's me. definitely had hiccups. Yeah, they had to switch me to an iTunes subscription, but. That's neither here nor there. The one thing that worries me is video quality. Yeah. I, the one thing I saw in Transformers, the video quality on the Transformers digital download was heavily MPEG compressed. And I do not want that when I'm watching something on my big screen. TV. Yeah, especially if I'm sitting here like saying, oh, let's convert all my stuff to digital. And you got that, mm -hmm. you know, and you're saying you had what was supposed to be the HD version. Right. right. Now, most of my stuff, I'm just converting the DVD to SD. I'm not really expecting mm -hmm. much than as well as the DVD does. Right. Right. But that that's definitely an issue. And unfortunately, it's up to what they decided to do compression wise. Mm -hmm. And you would think when I, and I saw. So so just to put things in perspective, I think the the digital download and in, in, in high def for um, Dark Side of the Moon Transformers was like one point one point two gig. Mm -hmm. And they're already showing that the Iron Man downloads going to be, I think, three a little over three gig. So you're, I'm sure they're not compressing it as much as they once were. Yeah. I'm just hoping that it, it's not horrific. I, I want 5.1 surround sound. I want, I want nice, crisp, clean video. Yeah. And again, it's going to be the studios kind of working it out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if anything, I think this ultraviolet is the best chance of that happening. Um, I mean, obviously, you're still going to be split up between uh, people picking iTunes, picking Amazon as their, this is where I'm going to buy my movies. Um, but as far as a, I like the idea that I buy the DVD or Blu-ray, if I, I, I'm sure I'll get Blu-ray eventually because these next consoles are all going to have them built in. Um, but I like the idea is I can still buy that physical thing to put on my shelf, which is what I like to do, what I'm trained to do, especially with these superhero movies. I just like doing that for these, you know, movies that I really mm -hmm. dig like that. Um, they're kind of like that collection trophy thing. Right? It's interesting because you've gone, you've gone to, I'm going to read my comics under a monthly subscription where I get unlimited comics. Oh, I love that. So idea. I don't have you know boxes why? of comics. You know exactly but why. I want my, I want I, my, my, <laughs> my walls well, lined that's the with comic DVDs. That's the difference though. They, no, 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 no. When you have a comic book DVD movie, it's an event, right? This is, it, it's made it. It's one event. When I, the problem I've always had with comics is I hated collecting comics because I'd always miss part of the story. I just want to read the story. That's why I love picking up trades from the library. That's why I love this Marvel Unlimited subscription that they've Netflixized the stories. And I'm still giving the money and doing it the appropriate way. I'm getting through the library and doing it the appropriate way. I'm not stealing comics anymore. Um,. <laughs> But the reason I left comic books was I was a poor college student and I wasn't going to drop four bucks a book that I'm going to read in five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I agree with you. I mean, I no matter how good the art is and the story is, I'm not up for that financially, <laughs> you know, I, and I think that's where they lose a lot of people. But I think um, I think more or less they're making up with that with the trade paperback uh, 
you know, side of things. Even that's like 20 bucks a pop. But still, uh, this fits... This lets me read things that are more attuned to the way I want to read them. And that's what's important. That's why this ultraviolence is important. This is why Netflix is important. This is why Spotify's and Pandora's are important. And I'm thinking about Spotify. The, the, the wife moved over to Spotify. So I'm like, ah, wait for my Pandora subscription to expire. And then I'll consider it, right? I don't know if the way Spotify is, from what I hear from friends telling me about it, is the way I want to listen to music. Well, they have radio stations. They that do, are, they do. But I, 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 but again, I'm kind of really into the Pandora side of things, so I'm like, yeah, I'm good on this. You know, I have don't have a problem with it. I'm I'm happy playing the money to you know. Hopefully, it'll stick around because I like the service. I know they, we always hear news about them having problems with it, but I have streams of content coming to me in the way that I prefer to consume them. Do you? So, and, and I'm not familiar with the pay Pandora. I'm on the free. I have a commercial here and there. Mm -hmm. I ha I can thumb up, thumb down. I can pause. Um, I can fast forward. I can't rewind. Either the big advantages I have, I mean, there's there's some other access things, but the big advantages are uh, no commercials, and I can skip more songs. It's okay. Not, it's not unlimited, but it's significant. It's enough. <laughs> you know, I rarely run mm -hmm. into that unless, like, my shuffle has gone really weird. And you just back out and get into another playlist and you're good anyway so would you think about the apple radio no no i'm happy with pandora i i i, I reason i'm behind pandora because i like the idea of the music genome product or okay the music genome project and that's something that i'm in lieu kind of a, a supporting with that so i mean that's that's the secondary reason i picked pandora over the other ones but still the same idea and really i think it's well wait what how much was uh the itunes one free it's free with commercials or it's free with commercials it'll be an ios 7 so now you'll have okay. radio well we'll see it's definitely what, and then is, isn't so much like spotify doesn't google's music has something now yeah where it's like 10 yeah. bucks a month yeah unlimited. it kept bugging me to buy it when i was setting up my account on the on the nexus uh so um yeah there's plenty of options which is great you know if you live in one of those ecosystems over over another you know like you got a google device well you're not gonna go with the itunes one or you know I, ideally hopefully they have a google version of the music i'm waiting for the google version of music on my iphone to be honest there's some third-party apps but they're always really weird um because i like the idea of like here's all my stuff up in the cloud and i can get my stuff because i bought all this stuff over sync, the years sync down locally or just stream it um the app it's i think it's mostly stream being them i don't know i haven't played with it on the on the tablet on the google side at least the apps i have will down the stream and download them and keep them and then i ran out of space on my phone so um all right uh, let's get to uh, let's touch base on this one i you know I, I have a couple glass stories in here but you know I'm, i like your glass stories you like my glass story. i don't want to like become your glass. the glass show i feel but like here's the funny part is, is that with not it. many people even know someone that they can talk that's to true. or that's see true. with glass. That's true. So to me, this is like a big, like I go into work tomorrow and I'm like, oh, you should see what Sorg had last night. He was doing this, which is glass. <laughs> he was doing this. This is like, something that's I'm where doing. I really think. This is my, my, there's one story in here I thought was pretty cool, but I actually couldn't get the worst. So I don't want to talk about it too much, but I love the idea. Uh, there's this, I think it was called, hold on. It's called Crystal Shopper. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's in there um <laughs> and uh the idea is sound um the idea is i can pull up i can grab this magazine say and pull up look at the barcode and i get an amazon top price lowest price and i can add it to a list for later to to buy if i wanted to or if i'm in a store and i look at this and say okay this is pretty much the right price for this um i would use this a lot in gamestop for instance uh you know, it's it's mm -hmm. like the price checker app that Amazon does, but it's right here. I'm walking in and I can just look at something. I love the idea because we had a demo early on when Glass was first being talked about. And it's first actually being released. Somebody did a cool video where uh, you go through the store and you look at your groceries and it pulls it up and it adds it to your shopping list. And you know how much you're spending and everything. And, it, and it's that one step closer to that. Problem with it is it crashes when I try to use it. When I installed it. That's so. sad. <laughs> so, Does it give a frowny face? No, it gives a... Uh, let's see here. A, a scan barcode. Stopped unexpectedly, and I got the uh, caution symbol. Mm. So, there you go. Um, but the one thing that somebody is doing that looks like it works, 
I, I love the idea about how glass is going to help the disabled, basically. A uh, great video I saw a couple weeks ago. It's actually Google Glass has a video channel on YouTube of people, like explorers, using glass in mm -hmm. interesting ways and everything. Um, and there was one on, you know, this one girl was, like, disabled. I don't think she could use her hands really too well. So they had her on glass, so she got to go on a camping trip. She actually got to help with navigation because you can do the directions on this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she got to help with you know other other aspects. Say how do I build a fire? You know glass and 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 you know help help that way. Um, so she got to feel part of the, the 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 camp out and everything and got to experience that. That's really cool. Um, this one I saw today is actually or yesterday I think I found it. Uh, Google Glass app will map your face to detect your emotions. We saw something like this before that the Connect was doing that would show moves and it was like a, a, a virtual uh, psychiatrist, right? When I was seeing, they're, they're saying something too where it's going to be, it can monitor heart rate, it can monitor... Um, for the Connect. For the Connect. Yeah. Where it's yeah. going to be able so to detect... All those. And it can actually make, it, supposedly they'll be able to make in-game decisions... Mm -hmm. Based on your reaction, I heard about that too. I heard about which could get that really too. interesting. Um, but but we saw things before where it was just based on facial expressions and, and where your head moved and everything. So there is a couple of actually this company actually has a few applications. I'll pull up the video here um, where they're using this facial technology um, in, in different ways. Like you know, we've heard about things like uh, uh, your attention. Uh, somebody actually just patented and has something that's eerily sounded like a Google Glass device where you're looking at an ad and you actually, the pay-per-click is actually pay-per-book and how much attention is on that ad. Could be interesting as we have so many things with cameras looking at us, right? Well, these guys um, actually have a technology that more maps your face and we talk. It talks a bit about like your social interactions. Are you feel happy? But no, it's a flat uh, kind of thing on the other end. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I mean, so that's like a social internet kind of uh, situation. But the big thing on this is helping people with autism, kids with autism, tell people's emotions that they're encountering. Think about it, you put this on a kid with autism can't read. Mm -hmm. you know people's faces real well i'm not real familiar with autism so I'm, you know, if i misspeak something somebody correct me an email or something um but here they show showing here like it says it, it sees she's happy pulls up oh she's happy you know so you know you're not being yelled at or anything mm -hmm. you know um <clears throat> that's really really cool uh, have i brought up on the show the one student that had a learning disability then they gave me an uh uh, um, oh crap! I can't remember the name. It depends that 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 can record. The I know I know exactly what uh, you're talking about. No, I think you. I saw I saw you tweet it. You saw me tweet. I was talking to somebody about it recently. Ah, mm. oh, I can't remember the pen. You it, it records and you got a special notebook and and I saw and he actually demoed it for me, which was cool. Like because I've I've heard about these like years ago. Somebody, if you know what this is, please. Tell you have me. to have a special paper, but it's it a special up tablet, kind of like how when you have the Evernote uh, notebook or whatever, right? Um, and, and actually, like, he can write notes during a lecture. Oh, it's going to bug me that I can't remember what this pen is. But um, but I love that idea of, of devices like this, uh, uh, you know, helping disability, you know, uh, and kind of giving access to people that, you know, maybe didn't have that. Is it the LiveScribe Echo? The, I think it is the Echo. Yeah, the Echo Pen. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It's the Echo Pen. Um, so uh, even that, that, that's like helping people with learning disabilities is really cool. Um, you know, again, these are kids that are like first quarter in a, in a tech school. So mm -hmm. they're co coming out of high school. They're trying to adapt them to that. Anything that can help them out, um, especially going to a tech school kind of makes sense, right? They're, hopefully they're at least on that tech minded, uh, way anyways. So, but yeah. So, um, I think we're out of time for this week, Chilla. Cool. Cool. We'll have to bring, I, I, I'll, I'll go, I'll pull some of my stuff for next week and hopefully we can get that other thing started. Definitely that <laughs> other thing. I got well, float the idea. <clears throat> what are we trying to do, real quick? So one of the things um, that that caught my attention was Flipboard has you can curate your own mag magazines. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to take the show notes, whether we get to something or we don't get to something, and actually have a magazine that would be available with all of the links to all of the original articles. Um, it, it it beats just perusing show notes i'm sure yeah, for a lot our, of users. our show notes aren't the prettiest it's yeah. just really just a bunch of links and and some quick notes we made for reminders for in the show 
So, so they, I like that idea. So basically, it would be providing that. You know, it, it would like you get a new edition every every week. Tuesday night, Wednesday, however, yeah. whenever we decide to do it. Uh, and it's like, oh, here's the stuff. So you listen to the show, and hey, what was that thing? And you can flip through, and and kind of that's like the it's the extra features yeah. that I'm not getting on my DVD. <laughs> exactly. So hopefully, hopefully we'll have that. Um, unfortunately, I'm a complete moron and created the account and then forgot the password. <laughs> it's fine. So, it's so fine. I have I have the password phase. reset. It's the testing phase. <laughs> That's fine. All right, Shilla, you're at Shilla on the Twitters. That I am. Go follow him. He talks about tech stuff. Most of the time. Most of the time. I'm trying yeah. to think if I talk about anything else. <laughs> Probably not. Pittsburgh stuff? I want very rarely. I'm not a I'm not a sports huge sports person, so it's very little sports talk. I don't know. I did start this thing though. I don't know if you've noticed. I I actually Instagram a picture of my commute home from Sorgatron Media Studios every Tuesday night. I have not noticed because I'm usually working <laughs> during that time. Uh, but so if you want to see my travel home every week, and I'm sure as time goes on, it'll be getting darker and darker and darker. So sooner or <laughs> later, sooner or later, it'll just be a black square for about six months. <laughs> But yeah, that that is one of the things that I've been tweeting that actually um, AJ hit me up about last week. So that was out there. Oh, I found a Get Clue sticker. You got, you got, oh, I all my Get Clue stickers. I have a Get Clue sticker obsession. And sure. I actually order them and stick them on things. And... Are you tweeting your Instagrams? No, because when I click on Twitter and Instagram, it tells me that it's broke. That's awesome. So then, are you just Chilla on Instagram for people that want to look? Um, I think I'm Chilla five seven nine because Chilla was taken. We'll find that out right here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. one day. Yeah, it looks like you. That's me. There, so he I'm is. out there, Chilla five seven nine. So that's his trip home. There you go. He takes the up in the upper route. left is the trip home. Oh wow! I don't live look on the top of a sky. tower. Look at that sky. Go check check them out. Instagram.com slash chilla579. And there's actually a great picture there of uh, over uh, at that line of Mount Lebanon and Dorland. And that's actually, awesome I think I used an, I don't think I actually filtered it. I think that's that was the, for real. I think that's an eight. So just use, I'd use the HDR that's uh, built in. The sky looks like it's straight out of Ghostbusters mm -hmm. 2. And I used a flash because you can see it actually, I couldn't, couldn't believe it actually kind of reflected off the street signs. Wow. So. That's awesome. And I'm Sorgatron. I'm over at Sorgatron.com, SorgatronMedia.com, MikeSorg.com. I'm writing about the Google Glass. I'm actually going to be on the TV again tomorrow. Uh, if you have PCNC here in the Pitts, greater Pittsburgh area, that's, the, I think, the Pittsburgh Cable News Channel, the Channel 11 does. Uh, I'm actually going to be on Night night Talk. I should know the show. Night Talk at 8 o'clock Wednesday night. Uh, that is the 21st, if I have my dates right. Uh, so I might DVR that so I can get it because I don't know if they put their shows online or if I can get my hands on it. Uh, we're going to be on there talking Google Glass. I know there is going to be somebody from CMU that's going to be joining me. So I will not be the smartest man in the room. Cool. But that doesn't take much. Uh, and this is the awesome cast. As usual, check us out. We're at uh, uh, SorgatronMedia.com to check out all the episodes. Check us out on YouTube, iTunes, Blip TV. We're on your Roku box. If you got that Blip TV app, look up the awesome cast and you see us on the TV. There's a lot of you guys doing that, and that's really cool to know that we are on TV uh, in your homes. So go check that out. Please like us, uh, subscribe to us, friend us. However you want to do it, and at, at uh, Awesome Cast on Twitter, and of course Google Plus and Facebook as well. Uh, thanks to our awesome chat room, um, telling me about how wrong I am about Android all night. You've been our awesome audience. <laughs> Have an awesome week. Awesome.